In this video, I want to look at the problem of what, how to store a combination of objects as a key to a standard map. So as an example problem, a little bit contrived, we're going to have an int age and a string last name as the key. The combination of the two is the key and a string representing the first name is the value. So our first solution is going to be a struct, and this is the first the first solution you might think of when combining two valuable two values together. The pros are it's easy to understand, it's self-documenting, we know the age based on the name, and we can use it for multiple purposes and not just keys. Uh, the cons is it's got a lot of typing and we have to implement the operator less than for a standard map. So let's look at this solution. Let's start by creating our struct person. And it'll have an int age and a standard string name, last name. In order to make this easier to construct a person, we're going to create a constructor, taking in an age and a last name, and assigning those to our member data. Now in order to work with a map, we need our person struct to implement operator less than. I'm not going to go into that in this episode, but to show it, Now we can construct our map. It'll be a map from person to string. I'll call it struct map. We can access elements inside of the map using by constructing a person. This is solution one. Let's look at solution two. The second solution is to use a tuple. Um, the pros for a tuple are it's easy to type. We get operator less than for free. So what are the cons? The cons are we have to use git and then inside of ankle brackets zero and it doesn't really say what you're getting. Let's look at this in code. So I'll create a map to it from a tuple to a string. And this will be boost tuple, taking in an int representing our age and a standard string representing our last name. And it will the value will be a string again. Let's call this our tuple map. The way we access values in our tuple map is to use the boost make tuple, which will construct a tuple of with the appropriate arguments. So If you want to get arguments from a tuple, say I have a tuple from 10 Langsley, you can do dot get, and then in angle brackets, you can give it the index of the value you want to get. So this will return 10. If I did the same thing except got the 
first index instead of the zeroth index, this will return Langsley. Finally, there's one more solution I want to go over, and this is a struct that inherits from a tuple. And the pros for this are the documentation from structs, multi-purposeness from structs is all there. Um, and we get the operator less than for free from the tuple. But the cons are the template, some of the template functions for the tuples are not guaranteed to work. For instance, tuple size is not guaranteed to work. And it's also a bit of an obscure method. And finally, it's more typing than the tuple solution, but it's still less than the struct solution. So for this example, I'm going to start with my tuple, which is just the same tuple, the int age and the string last name, and I'm going to call it person tuple. So there's a, a rule in C++ that I want to go over first, and boost tuple has no virtual methods. And the rule when that happens, when you're inheriting from boost tuple, you cannot use polymorphism because the derived classes destructor will not be called if uh, there is no virtual table. So that's just a C++ rule, but just remember, boost tuple has no virtual methods, no virtual destructor, therefore you cannot use polymorphism. That being said, we don't intend to use polymorphism. So I'll define my person struct by publicly inheriting from our person tuple. Now that we have our person struct, let's add some getter methods to make it easier to know how to access the data. So for an int age, we can return get zero from the base class. And for a standard string, last name, we can return get one, get one. So you can see now we have the benefits of a tuple where we have an operator less than defined for us. And we have the documentation from a struct. There's one more thing we need to do in order to get this to play nicely with uh, the map. And that is to add an implicit conversion so that we construct we can add a, an implicit conversion function. So taking in a person struct, taking in a person tuple, we'll call it tuple, and then constructing the base class person tuple with tuple. This allows us, this allows us to call boost make tuple passing in the required parameters. And this will implicitly convert it to a person struct when we need a person struct. Let's see how this works. So I'll create a standard map from a person struct to a standard string. And we'll call this new struct map. So let's take our new struct map and access the data in it. So we can call new struct map. And we can call make tuple, passing it in five and Schmidt. Of course, we need to actually construct a standard string since our person tuple is expected to take in a standard string and not a character array. As a final summary, I just want to go over a few points. So structs, again, are very self-documenting, and it can be used for more than just keys. You can add methods to it. You can add setters, getters, all kinds of crazy stuff to it. Um, <clears throat> but tuples are still easy to construct, and they have the benefit of having the operator less than, which you have to define for the struct. But they aren't that self-documenting. And a couple notes on tuples. 
while we're here. Um, I did tuples of size two and they had an int and a standard string, but you can do up to, I think it's 10 or some other constant which you have to define somewhere, but I'm not going into that. That's out, outside of the scope. Um, but for example, you can make a boost tuple of float, 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 three floats, and it's the same kind of, it's the same method to construct it, boost make tuple. It's an overloaded method which can construct tuples of any size and of any types. And then finally we did, we went over struct tuples or tuple or structs that inherit from tuple. And these are self-documenting, which is awesome. And they have an operator less than, but polymorph polymorphism becomes dangerous. And this is probably the biggest flaw and the reason you probably don't see it very, very often. And there's actually a lot more to tuples than what I've shown. For instance, boost tie, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. And I encourage you guys, if you're curious, you can go look it up yourself. But this has been a quick introduction to tuples and using them as keys and maps. So thanks for watching, guys.